What's up y'all? I'm Kyle. You're watching Driving and Vibing. Today's video is all about seven reasons why you do not need solar power for your RV. So stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I'm excited to talk about this, but you may be asking, uh, Kyle, why are you making this video? You have solar and lithium batteries, and that definitely is true. I am adding to the hype out there on YouTube. I think there is so much hype about solar power on YouTube for RVs that I really wanted to balance that out with a few common sense reasons why you don't need solar power for your RV because there are lots of scenarios where it's not necessary. Don't get me wrong, I definitely love solar power and I think a small deployable unit is um, perfect for anybody. It doesn't cost a lot of money to get those deployable units and see if solar can even benefit your travel style. But what we're talking about today is just investing in multiple solar panels, getting on your roof, installing those solar panels, getting a solar charge converter, getting the batteries down there, and just the whole kit and caboodle. That can be expensive and time consuming and it isn't always necessary. So let's get into those reasons why it's not. The first reason and the first question you gotta ask yourself is, where are you gonna be camping? If you're camping at RV parks, state parks, national parks, there's a great chance that you're gonna always have electrical hookups at the very least. If you're always camping somewhere where electrical is available, solar power just isn't necessary. You might be off grid for one night while you're staying at a Walmart in between destinations, but even your simple pre-installed RV battery should be enough to get you through that one night to get to your destination. In that situation, if you only see yourself at RV parks, state parks, national parks, I think solar power would be an overkill for you, so you might not want to invest in it. Number two on the list of why not to get it is if you're in a class B. Class Bs are unique in and of themselves because they really don't need solar power as much as other types of RVs. What Class Bs do need are great batteries to keep everything charged up, but whenever someone travels in a Class B, they're usually pretty mobile, starting that Class B up almost daily because it's their daily driver in addition to their living space. So every time you crank up that Class B, you're charging the batteries, and you're charging the batteries usually at a much faster rate than solar will charge them. So if you're running in and back and forth from the campsite to town, your batteries are getting topped off. If you got a long travel day, your batteries are getting fully recharged. And this is where solar panels, or at least a lot of solar panels on a Class B, really aren't that um, practical unless you're just staying off grid and not starting the, starting the engine for a long period of time. So I think if you're in a Class B, I would much prefer um, investing in a battery system than necessarily a large solar system. Next up on our list, number three is, if you don't mind the quiet hum of an inverter generator, then you don't need to invest in a solar power. A little antidote that we experienced in our very first RV, which was a 16 foot fiber stream, only room for two solar panels on there anyways. We went into camping world all excited about solar, only to be shot down by the salesman to say, once we get done playing with solar power, he'll see us when we want to buy a generator. It hurt my feelings. I thought, well, this is a bummer. I want to run everything off solar power. But the fact of the matter is, in that rig and in lots of rigs, there's just not enough space on the roof to be able to charge everything with solar power. And that's just the way it is. And uh, we did finally get an inverter generator for that 16 foot fiber stream. And it was probably the best investment we made for that RV. So if you don't mind that quiet hum, you can always top off your batteries with that generator. You can run the AC with those generators. You can get the morning coffee with those generators. So just be respectful with them, but there's no shame in running a quiet inverter generator. Number four reason why you don't need solar power is if you're going to always be needing the AC unit. If you're gonna be traveling where it's warm and you need some cool air in that RV, I can guarantee you that your solar system won't be able to keep up with the AC demands. You will hear people online that say, I ran my AC with solar power. I have enough solar power to run the AC for days. 99.9% .9 of the time, that just isn't going to be your scenario. And if it is the case, I promise you that it will cost 10 times the amount 
have a single generator. Solar power takes a long time to pay off. If you gotta run the AC all the time, you're gonna make a big investment into that solar system and it probably won't be worth it. The number five reason why you don't need to invest in a solar power system is if you're too cheap to buy lithium batteries. Lithium batteries are all the rage right now, but in our opinion, it's for good reason. You can run them down without damaging them and they weigh substantially less than an AGM battery or a standard lead acid battery. And with most RVs, they have a pretty tight cargo capacity of stuff that you can carry along. If you're gonna to want to invest in a big solar system, I promise that you do not wanna waste that cargo capacity on lead acid batteries. You should go ahead and get those lithium batteries. If you don't wanna invest in a huge lithium battery system, it's probably best that you just stick with a deployable solar panel to top off your battery or a generator to do it. In most applications, it's not practical to weigh down your RV with the weight of lead acid batteries. The number six reason why you don't need to get the RV solar power is if you're unsure. If you just don't know if you need solar or not, I would say try RVing first without it. If you want to take a small step up, try that deployable unit that you can top off the batteries with. But don't just invest in a huge solar system before you even go RVing. You might find that you don't like boondocking. You might find that you like RV parks better. And whatever your travel rhythm turns out to be can really depend on whether you need solar power or not. So I would say get out there and do RV life for a little while and then let that experience dictate if you need solar or how much solar you need. And the final reason why solar power is not necessary for an RV is if you just simply enjoy rustic camping. If you wanna get out there and disconnect, if you're working a nine to five and going camping is a great time for you to not think about the rest of the world that's going on, there's no reason to get solar power. That'll only tempt you to turn on the computer, to charge up your cell phone, to stream Netflix. I totally understand that people love to camp to get disconnected from it all. And if that's you, solar power might play even a smaller role in your camping experience. So those are the seven reasons that I think every RVer should consider before installing solar power. We have 640 watts of it on our roof. We have the 500 amp hours of lithium batteries and we love boondocking and it allows us to get off grid and not have to think about the batteries for weeks at a time. And that is what we love about solar power and that's what we love about the battery system. But we totally understand that it's not for everyone. Definitely do your research, look at these seven reasons at why you might not need it, and then slowly work your way into solar power. There's no need to make one big invest investment up front. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you liked it, give it a big thumbs up. If you got any questions about solar, drop them below. I'll answer them if I can. We'll see y'all next time, later on.